Are you for a filter and rich flavor, too? The logical move is L&M. The logical move. The logical move is L&M. The rich flavor cigarette with a modern all-white filter. The logical move. The logical move is are you for a filter? L&M has a modern, all-white filter. Pure white, both inside and outside. And you get the good taste of L&M's rich flavor leaf. The good taste of soft nature, longer-age tobaccos. So if you're for a filter, and rich flavor too... The logical move. The logical move is L&M. Hi, boys and girls. Is the 50EH5 the new... 50C5? Could it be? Is it possible? Let's find out. You know, you just, just people are out there working on their projects and, uh, you know, just can't get out and uh, maybe having a difficult time just trying to find tubes at all. So that's what this video is about. Maybe I'll, I'll have a little trick or two I could uh, show you to, to kind of get you through this. Uh, back in the day where the TV repairman would come over to your house and repair your television set or your radio even and uh, before that and sometimes he'd have his caddy and maybe didn't quite have the right tube in there so then thus the two substitution handbooks so these are kind of the quick and dirty ways to get you through it and still do a relatively good job and uh, get the radio or television set back uh, back going. So that's where this is kind of coming into now. You know, there's still a lot of people working on radios and despite the fact that, you know, the 50C5 is rather common and uh, also 50L6GT is pretty common, there, there's the realization that you know, nobody's making these tubes anymore, and, you know, sooner or later we're going to run out unless there's a manufacturer that makes them. So, let's say that you need a 50C5 right now, right here, and uh, just not one around, so you go through your your uh, tube caddy or junk drawer or tube box or wherever you store your tubes. You might find, why is this not focusing, there we go. You might find a 50 EH5, and it'll actually work, but there's a couple things you have to watch out for. This is the SAMS tube manual. You see there on the, on the left there, it has 50 C5, and on the right, the acceptable substitute 50 C5A. And uh, that's going to be the substitute they're going to be looking for. This other substitution book. I'll open it up and go to 50C5, which I found right here. Let me see if I can get, the, get a good camera shot here. There is 50C5, and you can see the, the substitutes they have there. 35C5, which I suppose you could use, but boy, that would glow rather hot. I probably wouldn't want to use that, but in a pinch, I guess you could. A 50 CA5, a 50 EH5, and then they also have an HL, can't make that out through the camera lens, HL92 or 93. But anyway, so they're saying good, 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 and excellent in that order. So uh, I've had some success using a, uh, a 50 EH5, but let me explain what the differences are. Okay, now here's the it's my RCA uh, tube manual here, and here's the pinout for the 50C5. You can see it's a typical seven-pin miniature. All right, you've got three grids: grid one, grid two, grid three. Okay, here's your plate, and then your heaters, pins three and four up here. The 50EH5 is electrically the same too. Still a seven pin miniature, all right. You've got three grids, one grid, grid two, grid three. Here's your plate over here, all 
all right, pin 7 and then pins 3 and 4 are here. So it's electrically identical to a 50C5. Now going back to the going back to the 50C5, we got all the various specifications here. The one I want to pay attention to is all the way at the bottom here, and that's the word transconductance. You can see that right there. And if you go over here, it's approximately 7,500 micromoles. Now, a secondary one that we want to pay attention to is the plate resistance. Okay, and it's around 10,000 ohms. All right, so just keep those numbers in mind for a second. And we'll check the 50 EH5. All right, now over here, the plate resistance is slightly larger on the 50 EH5. So we're, we're about 11,000 ohms or 11K. But look at the transconductance. Okay, now on the 50 C5, it's only 7,500 micromoles. Here, that's double. Okay, or almost double. It's about 14,000 micromoles. So, what does all that mean? Okay, I have the I have the 50 C5 in the tester. Let me turn it on. Let it warm up. We'll be able to see the uh, the emissions here on the tester. This isn't going to show it I, I, in the micromoles. It's just going to be just good or bad or whatever. And you can see the two come up. That's in the good section of the tube. Okay. Now, transconduct. Well, first of all, let me check it for shorts just to make sure that there are no shorts. And if there's a short, a light will come up here on the tester. Okay. Now, let me do the transconductance test. Now, if the transconductance is bad, then the needle will swing over here, and then the lower part of the meter here, where it says grid leakage, that's the same as transconductance. If you have too much transconductance, it'll swing over here. So you can see as the 50C5 is showing, that seems to be okay. Now, let me get the 50EH5 out. That's in the box. These are tubes that I've already tested. Now this same rule of thumb will apply to also the the 30, uh, 35EH5, the 25EH5, 12EH5, 6EH5. Okay. Now this is a brand new tube. The 50C5 that I put in there is a little bit used. But you can see not a problem with emissions at all. Real nice, good, crisp came, needle came right up too. Now, let's go to the transconductance. Okay. Now normally what I do is, now there's going to be no issue with this tube because I tested it before a long time ago. And you can see, okay, there's a non-issue there. But since there's so much transconductance in the tube. I saved a couple tubes that I did. I bought a bag of 50 EH5s in Kutztown. And here's one. This is a, a Packard bill. I don't know how well you can make that out here in the picture. I'm going to put it in the tester. Now this one had too much transconductance. So first we'll just check the original uh, the emissions first. And you can see no problem with that at all. Okay, now I'm going to go to transconductance and watch what happens. Now right now life is good, but let the tube heat up. And as you can see already, that needle is just starting to creep up a little bit, a little bit. You let that thing go for about a minute or so, and that needle will be in the red. So what does that mean to your radio or your TV or your audio output? means it's going to probably go away. It's just not going to work. And sometimes you just have to leave them in there for a while, but they'll come up. And this is slow. It requires a little patience, but trust me, this is a bad tube. I refuse to put it in my radios. I won't sell this tube. This is what you have to worry about 
with the 50 EH5s. Eventually they're going to have too much transconductance if they're no good. That one's still going up. Here, I'm not going to waste a lot of time, but this tube is not good. It'll go, it'll go in saturation and not work. And I'm going to try this one. This is another 50 EH5. Let's see what happens here. Maybe this one will uh, go quicker. You know? So first we'll check the regular emission. It should be just fine. Okay, so no problems with emissions. Now transconductance. This tube was a bad tube and had a lot of uh, transconductance. And you can see that one's starting to creep up. This one's going up significantly faster than that other tube did. But eventually, it'll go. And you can see there it is. So there it goes in the saturation. Alrighty, so uh, I wanted to point that out to you. You know, who knows, 10, 20, 30 years from now, will there be any 50 C5s left to, you know, put an output of the radio or so? Well, who knows? But uh, there are some good substitutes around, so don't panic. Um, just remember that there's going to be certain little things that are going to be involved. You know, so you have to watch for, like I say, excessive transconductance, and then the rest still applies. If you have enough transconductance to make the tube work, shorts in the tube, uh, you know, too biased and all that other kind of stuff. So uh, I figure I just point that out to you. So this could be the future of 50 C5s right here, or one of the all of them anyway. So anyway, thanks for watching and uh, listen. Tell your friends if they're uh, into the old radio hobby. Uh, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Comment. You know, I love reading comments. And I'll see you around next time. And oh, and thank you for all the kind comments about the. Uh, the Kutztown videos. I'm glad everybody enjoyed them. Until next time. Bye.